What if I told you there was a plugin that you could select up to seven of these effects, string them in a chain, and macro automate all of their parameters and parameter behaviors to one knob? Let's say a 24 decibels per octave filter, an oscillator, some distortion, gain automation, noise generator, reverb, and a side chain pump. Let's take a listen. The combinations of what you can do here are almost endless. Let's do some maths here. N equals 18 number of modules. S equals 7. That's the amount of slots in the chain. Unique combinations equals N factorial over S factorial times N minus S factorial. I'm just going to get the number here, drop it in Google, and let me and it'll calculate it for me. That's 31,824 unique combinations, which is wild, before even modifying any parameters. We're at that number. So what is this plugin? This is Transit by Andrew Huang and Baby Audio. They've solved a big issue I face when mixing. Clients trying to experiment and introduce new production elements. Even when a production is set in stone, nothing is ever off the table. And I always want to satisfy my clients. I always want to explore sound as far as we can take it in a mix. And this is literally a dream plugin. I would not be making this video. I, I, I like Baby Audio stuff, but I've really don't make videos on this stuff because I don't use it often, but this is like a dream plugin. And remember how I said 31,824 unique combinations? Well, that wasn't including the fact that each of these 17 modules have either three or four parameters which you can tweak. So you need to raise that 31,824 unique combinations to the power of four factorial. It's pretty wild the diversity and the amount of stuff you can do with this plugin. So, I'll just show you a few things. You can either set static positions to each of the parameters, or you can enable by clicking this little yellow dot here, um, it to track the macro transition control knob. So you can have, if you put this on, it actually tracks the position of that control there. And then you can dial in the range. So you can either make it go backwards, which is pink, so negative, or upwards, which is green. So it moves in a positive direction, that particular parameter. And then dragging on this center dial, uh, this center dial here changes the line from linear to a parabolic interaction where it moves up very quick and then slow at the end, or exponential where it's very slow at the start and very quick at the end. So you can actually change the way it interacts with the macro knob. It's wild. And what I want to do is I want to go through each of the modules. So let's dive in. And to demonstrate this, I'll just put in bypass. I've got this transition from the song Going Home by Morning Maxwell. It's a great song. I'll just play the transition as it is. Cool transition, but I just want to use this transition to explore all of the different modules I have. So the first one is an auto pen. You have the option of a sine, triangle, saw, or square wave. You can change the amount of the transition, so um, how much of that panning or that auto panning is going on, and then the rate or speed at which it's at. Here's something I dialed in with it. Next is the bit crusher. You can change the amount of bits, how much it down samples, and also the mix. Have a listen to how I've used the automation features here with an exponential curve for it. Then you've got the chorus, you've got rate, depth, feedback, and the blend of the mix. Take a listen. is really wacky. You've got a delay. So much fun. You've got the distortion. I've dialed these all in so you can just have a listen to how much fun you can. The one thing I do like about the distortion modules, and I will mention this, is that you don't just have a hyperbolic tangent, you have the arc tangent, hard clipping, um, rectangle, and a fold function. So you could, you've got very unique shapes of distortion. So it's not subtle changes when you go from a hyperbolic tangent to an arc tangent or a hard clipping. It's quite pronounced. So you've got very different flavors of distortion. I actually like that about what they've done here. You've got the filters. So you've got low pass, high pass, band pass, notch. 
the resonance, which is like the Q value and the cutoff, which is the center frequency. Take a listen to this. Classic, classic. And uh, the 12 dB per octave or 24 dB per octave. You got the flanger again, rate, depth, feedback mix. Sounds great. I love that. That's a great one. Noise. This is really cool. Um, this is like, especially if you want to have like a noise build up and then add a pump afterwards. Take a listen. So if you wanted to, you can use the pump function here and have this going at eights and have it quite pronounced. What we might do is we might just start that a little bit lower at zero and then make it boost up right at the end. So it's just, it's just so much fun. I'll just get rid of that and we'll go to the next one, which is the oscillator. It's just so cool. You've got OTT, which I haven't really found a use for this at the moment, going through all the modules. It just is OTT plugin, but you can select it as a module. Um, what's next? The phasers are really cool. This is cool. Listen to this. That's wild. Pitch shift. It's got so much. The pump, obviously, you've heard. That's just the, the pulsing. Um, the reverb is pretty decent. Spread so you can make it wider. Which is really cool, a tremolo effect. That's all the modules, but I need to know if I've made a good judgment call on this because I really, really, really put a video out on the channel for a plugin I haven't been deeply involved with or used a lot or use every day in my sessions. This is one that is sort of left the field, got sent to me and was super interesting. It sparked my curiosity. I want to know from you guys and girls, do you think this will replace processes in your production or mixing workflow? What are you using or what would you use instead of this? Or do you think this is a definite step up or step into a new realm that you otherwise haven't experienced? I want to know from you guys in the comments, and it's important to me because I need to know when I'm making judgment calls on putting out content like this, is it helpful? Is it discovering something new for you? Because for me, this was, as soon as I saw it, I, I, I just, light bulbs popped off in my head and I said, this is super unique. I have to share it with people. I have to share it with the community on my YouTube channel. And I did. And if I was wrong to, you have to let me know because I... I want to make sure that the content here is helpful, helps you guys grow as good as you possibly can. So with that, I'll leave it with to you. like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.